So starting with question number three, again this is in the graphs, relationships, tables, equations, test from the p-book, um, and this is equi uh, exam number one. So the equation of the graph drawn below is this, they've given us an equation for this graph. Give the coordinates of all the intercepts x and y, so we need to find the coordinates here, here, and here. Our x coordinates here and our y intercepts there. So we can use the calculator for this um, if you would like. So coming into menu and go to, we want to go to graph number five. So exit back to you see where your equations are and we can actually just enter in the equation as we see it. So bracket three minus x bracket bracket x plus one bracket enter. And we'll go ahead and draw the graph. Now if you don't see it very well, that's okay. Click on F3 for your window, and we'll just put in some values that might make more sense. So we'll do, I don't know, we'll try negative 6 to 6. Leave the scale the same. Um, leave all that the same in our min, we'll leave that at negative 6 and we'll do I don't know, 6 again. See how this looks. So draw it up. There we go. Now we can see everything. Now again it's really important if you're going to use the calculator for this that you actually can see all the intercepts and points you're looking for. So to find the x-intercepts we're going to hit on G solve again. And remember x-intercepts are the roots so we see the first root is at negative 1, so when x is negative 1, y is 0. And to find the next one, hit the arrow over button, and we see 3. So our x-intercepts are when we have x is negative 1 and y is 0, and when we have x is 3 and y is 0. Remember, x first, y second, always. So we can write it in as points. And they want us to find the y-intercept as well, so we go back to G-solve, just hit it again, and we can see y-intercept right there, y in however you want to abbreviate that. Click on that, and there's just one of them, and we see it's at 0 and 3, so our point is going to be 0, 3. So the y-intercept is at 0, 3. Okay. So give the equation for the axis of symmetry and the coordinates of the turning point. So we'll start with that. Turning point is your min or max. So in this case, that's our turning point. And if we want to find that in the calculator, we can come into here and we can find the turning point by clicking on G solve again. And either max or min will give you the turning point. And in this case, it's a max because it's a peak. So we hit F2 for max, and there's our turning point. It's going to be at 1, 4. X is 1, Y is 4. So that's our coordinates for it. Uh, it's going to be at 1, 4 is where we have the turning point. Now what do they mean by axis of symmetry? I'm not sure we've used that word before in class, but axis of symmetry is what they mean by kind of like having a mirror line. So if I want to imagine where there would be a line that I could draw on this graph, or if I folded it in half, I'd have the mirror image of it. So if I did this as my mirror line, just as an example, and I folded these two sides in half, this top part of the graph is not identical to the bottom part of the graph, so that's not going to be the mirror line. In this case, our line of symmetry is going to be vertical, and it's going to go through the turning point. So if I fold the graph in half on that red line, I'll get two mirror images of each other there. And we found that our turning point was on the point 1, 4. So how do we write an equation for this line? What is the value of x on that line? That's at 1, and that's at 4. And for writing the equations of these vertical lines like this, basically what we want to look at is, does x ever change? It's 1 the whole time, so it doesn't matter where you are on this graph, what the value of y is, x is always equal to 1. So your equation is actually x equals 1. 
and that's your axis of symmetry. So that really is the rule that describes the red line, where if you fold it in half, you get the mirror image of yourself on the other side. Okay. If the parabola is now moved two units to the left, seven units down, give the equation for the parabola in its new position and give the coordinates of the y-intercept. Okay, so let's think about what we know. Um, we've got a parabola, and we've got the turning point at 1 comma 4, and we also have some other information here. We have this point is 3 comma 0, and this one is negative 1 comma 0, and we also found that this was 0 comma 3. So we've got four points on the graph. And so we can think about moving each of these if we wanted, and we want to go, in this case, we want to go down by 2, oh uh, sorry, down by 7 and to the left 2. So that would be kind of like moving this, going um, down 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and to the left 2, 1, 2. And that could be the new point, so we're going to transform that point over there. And one way we can find the equation for this is by using our calculator if we want. But first we want to get some information in a table that will be helpful for us. So let's write in the points that we had. We had negative 1 comma 0, 3 comma 0, and 0 comma 3. And there was also 1 and 4, our turning points. So if we imagine moving each of these points, we can figure out what we need to do. So to transform it, they wanted us to move to the left 2, so we need to go minus 2 and down 7 and minus 7. So our new graph is going to be, um, instead of at negative 1, it will be at negative 3, because I'm going to the left 2, I'm minusing 2 from that, and negative 7. And here I'm going to move from 3, minus 2 is going to be 1, and 0 minus 7 is minus 7. 0 minus 2 is minus 2, and 3 minus 7 will give us minus 4. 1 minus 2 is minus 1, and 4 minus 7 is going to be minus 3. So that's all new data points for us. That's points we can put into the calculator. So literally, physically transforming those points. So if we come back up to stat, we can enter in these new data points. So negative 3, uh, 1, negative 2, negative 1, and filling in the other part of the table, negative 7, negative 7, negative 4, negative 3. Okay, to find our equation, we hit graph, we hit graph again. We should expect to see some sort of parabola, because that's what we're dealing with, we're just moving it. So there we see a parabola shape. And because of that, we know it's going to be quadratic and x squared. So here's our information. a is negative 1, so we get negative 1 x squared minus 2 x minus 4. And r squared is negative 1, or r squared is 1, and that tells us that we've probably done our table correctly. Okay, so let's write out what we get for this equation using that information. So we have y is equal to negative 1x squared minus 2x minus 4. And you can write that as y is equal to minus x squared minus 2x minus 4. If you want, you don't have to put in the 1. Okay. Um, now there's a second format that you might actually have for this equation if you're using the transform... oh boy. If you're using the transform methods. And that would be this. y is equal to um, moving the turning point. We will find that we would get it's an upside down parabola, and it's going to be x plus 1 squared minus 3. And that comes from our transforms. The original parabola was here at 1 and 4, and we were going to move it to the left 2, so 1, 2. 
and down 7. So down to negative 3. So this is at negative 1, going from 1 to 0 to negative 1. And now going down 7, that will get us down to negative 3. So our new turning point is going to be down there. So we can use the points here. Negative 1, put in the positive here, the opposite sign, and the negative 3 because it's sh shifted down 4. Either equation will work. It doesn't really matter which format you've done, but just so you see that. Most of us have been using the calculator using that method. Okay, and they want the position of the y-intercept, last thing that we need to answer before we move on. So to find that out, we can use our calculator. We can copy this equation into the graph function. Hit execute, and it should be there. So if we go to Menu and Graph, we see our equation, just like we wanted it. Go ahead and draw it. Again, if it freaks out on you and says error, don't worry, just type it in again. 1 minus 1 x squared minus 2 x minus, was it, minus 4. And hit draw. And again, important information, you need to be able to see the points that you're going to look for. So if we can't see everything, we need to zoom out a little bit. So maybe we will change our y min to minus 10 and our y max to uh, minus 1. Let's see what happens here. I still can't see everything, but that's okay. We're not really interested in the other um, intercepts because they won't be there, but we're interested in the y-intercept, which is this one right here, and we can see it. So go to G-solve, y-intercept, and there it is. So our y-intercept is actually at 0, negative 4. So the y-intercept is equal to 0, comma, negative 4. x first, then y. And conveniently on the calculator, you can write it in, like you see it, x equals 0, so 0, comma, negative 4 just like we said here. Okay. Um, this last question is an exponential question, and so hopefully we can cover this all right to remind you guys of these things. The growth of a population of bacteria over a seven-hour period is given on the table to the right. Find the population of bacteria after six hours. All right. So first thing that we're going to check is what kind of differences do we have here. Looking at this, we have a difference of, uh, what do we have, a difference of 6, a difference of 18, a difference of 54. Okay, so it's not linear. We'll check again. What's our difference here? 6. What's our difference here? 18 minus 54. Oh, I don't want to do math in my head. So we've got 6 and 36, so a difference of 36. So we see that we're not seeing that it's going to be quadratic either. And so the next thing that we want to ask ourselves is, is it increasing very fast? Yes, it is. It's not linear, it's not quadratic, it's probably going to be exponential. So we need to think about how we remind ourselves about exponentials. So we'll go ahead and erase the first and second differences and think about figuring out, sorry, we want to keep the first difference on there. That's an important one. So that's 6, 18, and 54. So look at the first difference. And is there Oops, it doesn't need to be here, but is there a pattern um, that uses timesing, multiplying? So is there some way that we can times something to get from 6 to 18, and then times by that same thing again to get from 18 to 54? So how do we get from 6 to 18? Well, that 6 times 3 is equal to 18. And then how would we get from 18 to 54? Well, conveniently, 18 times 3 is also going to work out 54. So we have times by 3 each time. 
So in this case, our question mark becomes times by 3 times by 3. And so this we're going to use as our base. So 3 is the base. And if you're not sure if it's a tricky one, like 0 0.25 or 1.5, one way you can do this to figure out what the times is going to be is go 18 divided by 6, you get 3. And then do 54 divided by 18, and you'll get 3. And again, you'll find that it's the same. So you can take the first difference and divide it by the first difference of the number previous, and take the first difference and divide it by the number previous. So 54 divided by 18 gives us 3. 18 divided by 6 gives us 3. So we're timesing by 3 to go up here. So that's going to be our base. Um, so what we're going to need is an equation here. So this is going to be our, we'll call it um, time and our population. Remember it's always x first and then y. So we're going to say population is equal to our base, which is 3, times the time, which is our x. So our generic formula is always going to be y is equal to the base times the x plus or minus a constant. So we have our y, p, is equal to 3 times x, and it's going to be plus or minus some number. And we have to figure out what that is. So let's check. When t is equal to 1, what's p supposed to be equal to? p is supposed to be equal to 18. So let's see. When p is equal to 3 to the 1 plus something, it's supposed to equal 18. So 3 to the 1 is 3 plus something is equal to 18. What's the something that needs to go in there? 15, right? 3 plus 15 will equal 18. So our constant is 15, and our equation is going to be p is equal to 3t plus 15. You could have a negative number. It doesn't always have to be positive, but this is going to be the rule for us. So again, we looked at the first differences to figure out if there was a pattern for how we can times between them. In this case, they each times by 3. And then we needed to check to see if there was some sort of offset, a constant number that we needed to add on to get it to match the table. So again, 3 to the 1 is 3, plus 15 gives us 18, and we've got our first data point, 1 and 18, just like we'd expect. Okay, so we can now use this rule long way around, but without having to explain how I'm doing this. To start with, we found the rule. We can actually use that now to answer this question. 6 hours, that's time is equal to 6. So we can use substitution. Our rule is p is equal to 3t plus 15. But we're saying t is equal to 6. So p is equal to 3 to the 6 plus 15. We can enter that into the calculator. 3 to the 6 plus 15. So we use a little hat key for the to the. And we get 707, so, sorry, 744. So 744. That's the answer after 6 hours. OK. So find the rule. We've just done that in the previous steps. So find our rule. That's our rule. That relates the bacterial population P after H hours and use it to find out how many hours of bacterial, how many hours the population will exceed 1 million. Okay. So if you're not sure how to go about doing this one, we can use our calculator as well for this. Um, so one thing that we can look at is using table. So if we go to menu, table, oops, menu, table, enter in the rule that we have, which happens to be 3t plus 5. So 3 to the power of x, remember I always just use x to keep it simple, plus 15. So 3 to the power of x plus 15 is our rule. And we want to check our data points. Let's see what the set is here probably don't want it to go up in 0.25s, we'll just put it in 1s. And how quickly do you think that that's going to reach 1 million? So 
in seven hours. In seven hours, we were already at 2,000. So, not sure. Let's leave it at 20 and see if we get there. So, in 20, we get up to a million. Show our table. And let's scroll down. Looking to see when our population exceeds one million. Are we there yet? So if you're looking at the numbers, pay attention. If you're dyslexic like me, you might not notice that there's a little E in there. That's not a 3. And if you look over here, this actually shows you the full number written out without the decimal. But what they're saying there is 4.78 times 10 to the 6th. So we can look at it here. That's 4 uh, 4,782,984. So that's well exceeded the 1 million that we need. So let's scroll back up and find where 1 million comes in. So this is 531,000 at 12 hours, and the next one at 13 hours is over 1 million. So our question was, um, use it to find out after how many hours the bacterial population will exceed 1 million. Okay, so at 12 hours we're not over a million yet, but at 13 hours we will. So we could say at um, t equal 13, population is equal to, what was that again? 1549, am I doing it right? 338. So after 13 hours, it has exceeded it. And if we want to be a little bit more precise about that, we can come back to this exit and we can set and put in a step of, let's say, 0.5, and look at that. So, I'm expecting it to be again after 12. So, 12 and a half hours, it's not yet over 1 million, but just past that. And another thing that we can do to be really precise about that is use graph. So, if we go into graph, we've got our rule, 3 to the x plus 15. Let's draw it. Again, don't freak out, just retype the rule. Draw. And I can't see it, so I'm just going to put in some numbers starting with zero. And we want to, uh, we know what happens before, or af before 13, so we'll put that in. Um, and let's look at, we don't need negative values. and a max of, well, we need over a million, so try that. Draw it. Okay, there's our graph. We can see it's exponential in shape, increases very rapidly, and if I want to know where one million happens, come into G-Solve, and one million, I'm looking for a population of one million, that's my y-axis, so I'm actually wanting to find my x, so I can use x-calc because I'm wanting to find x. I know y of 1 million. And there's my x. 12.575. So we know exactly at 12.575 hours we have 1 million. So we can add that in here as extra information. So at t equals 12.575 hours population is equal to 1 million. So, after 12.575 hours. There's our answer.